It's time for Mini News, Mini News Sesh. Yeah! yeah. Hey kids, and welcome back to Design by Wingnut Social, the Mini News Sesh. Today we're doing something a little bit different that we thought you guys might enjoy. And we are going to introduce you to a couple of our team members and what they find to be important best practices for marketing for your interior design business and what makes them tick here at Wingnut Social. Just to get to know us a little bit, our very first vic- I mean, uh, guest <laughs> <laughs> is Assistant Director Abigail Weideman Coots. Because she's recently married. Abby, thank you for joining us again. It's been a minute since you've been on the show. It has been a minute, but we are back and in full swing. And I'm super excited to do this little introduction for all of you today. Yeah, so full disclosure, this is your idea, not mine. So um, <laughs> I like it. I think it's a really, really swell idea. So just introduce yourself really quickly in your position and we'll dig in. Yeah, of course. So like Darla said, my name is Abigail Weidman Coots. Still haven't changed that last name officially. Um, and I'm the assistant director here at Wingnut. So I've been here for over two and a half years and I actually started out as a social media manager. So I've had a lot of time to kind of learn the ins and outs of this company and really what works for our clients. And That's kind of what has led me to be able to do a decent job, I think, at my position now. (laughs) Definitely. Yeah. Um, And what I do in this position is a lot of project management, a lot of organization and really just making sure that both the team and our clients feel supported in our partnership together and making sure that projects stay on task and that we're moving forward in the right direction. I do a lot of trend monitoring as well and just really making sure, like I said, that things are on the up and up for both the team and our clients. And I really like it. I love it. And you're you're really just kind of downplaying your role here because you're also really ensure quality control and Mm -hmm. that everything is messaging and everything is on brand for clients. You are you are really the grease (laughs) that (laughs) that makes the engine go right now. And really, really lucky to have you here. And of course, all of your clients and everybody loves you. And I'm thrilled, (laughs) thrilled that you are the assistant director for Wingnut Social. And I've seen you from when we first hired. How has it been like over two and a half years ago Mm -hmm. when we first hired you from a little Try social media manager to now just balling, <laughs> just <laughs> just balling. <laughs> handling business. I, I love it. So what are what are some three things about you, Abby, that like you, nobody knows about you or oh. like three like fun little quirky things that I'm going to embarrass you here and ask All you right. about that no one knows about you that you want to share with the two people listening? The two people. Yeah, just two. Um, <laughs> well, let me think. I think the first one is I have really recently gotten super embarrassingly into baking to the point where every time my mom calls me, she's like, what are you making now? What are you baking now? And my husband loves it. So nobody's complaining too much, but I guess that's kind of a recent quirk. I've turned into a baker. I wouldn't complain. Yeah. I wouldn't complain at all. No, not at all. What, I know. I wish, I wish maybe I could have gotten into running or something like that, but baking <laughs> is the direction I've chosen to go into. Um, some, a little quirk. Uh, I am a huge fan of, we use a great project management system here called Asana, and that's what really yeah. keeps us on track. And I keep my Asana up to date, but I also, for some reason keep my to-do list in my notes on my computer and there's no point in it because it's already all in a sauna but you know (laughs) that's how you know I'm keeping your projects on track they're in my notes (laughs) all right so tell us something tell us a little idiosyncrasy or something about yourself like a little quirk or some like weird little traits that no one knows or at least you know what I mean like some like uh, for me I'll give you an example for me I and I've said this before on the show but it's been a while I have OCD and I count my mm. steps Ooh. not all the time but a lot of the time okay <laughs> so go. every time I sneeze it has to be three times if it's not three times and there's nothing I can do about it but it does kind of rub me the wrong way it has to be three times um and I love it perfect yeah. Yeah, that's me. I don't know. That's perfect. See, I love it. This is this is why we are wingnut social, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. Exactly. So, Abigail Weidman Coots, what would you say is your favorite thing about working in this field? Yeah, so I would say my favorite thing of working in the social media field and more specifically at Wingnut Social because I think this is something that our team takes a lot of pride in doing and it's something that 
we really take the time to do is getting to know the voice of our clients. So that way we can really nail their copy on social media and make sure that it's coming across authentically. Um, Like I said, that's something that is major in our process when we're writing our strategies. And of course, when we're creating content for our lovely clients, that's something we focus on. Yeah, and that's super important. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I really appreciate the the attention to detail you guys put put in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's a lot because, you know, it not only involves understanding our clients' business goals and their objectives, but really what makes them stand out from their competitors and what their core missions and values are of their firms. Because everybody's different. Everybody's driving factor is different. And so is everybody's ideal client. So really honing in on how we can connect our clients with their ideal people through their voice on social media is my favorite part. And it's something, like I said, that I think our whole Mm -hmm. team takes a lot of pride in. And that's the big overarching, like really important piece, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the hardest piece to get down. And I, I, yeah, right. And it is the most challenging, but it is the most fun because everybody that comes to us is different. There are no two interior designers that are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So I I love that is, that is a fun piece. I really do like that too. And seeing how everybody runs their business and what their goals are Mm -hmm. and seeing them grow and progress. So I I would agree with you. I think that's my favorite part too. And watching that, watching clients grow with us. For sure. Abigail Weidman Coots, if you could give our interior designers design audience listening one piece of really important advice for marketing themselves on social media what Mm -hmm. would that be I know there's a lot but like Mm -hmm. what what is some one of the biggest things that you would advise them Mm -hmm. so it's kind of a two-parter I know you asked for one but we're going to give you kind of a two-parter maybe a three-parter we'll see how I explain (laughs) it Um, I would say research really taking the time to be intentional. Um, You know, you're going to hear all of these social media tips and tricks as you're scrolling. They pop up on my reels feed all the time. They're everywhere. But my biggest piece of advice to someone just starting out is being intentional and doing your research. So first, you really need to understand where your ideal client's going to be. And if, you know, you are advertising something on social media, you have a business to advertise, you've obviously researched your ideal client. But researching your ideal Mm -hmm. client and research researching your ideal client on social media is a little bit different because, you know, not everyone's going to be on TikTok. They may be just on Instagram or just on Facebook. So taking Mm -hmm. the time to really think about where they're going to be and researching that way. The next thing I would say you need to research, and if you don't want to research this yourself, you can hire us to do so, but it would be to <laughs> research. Shameless plug. I know, just a little bit. It would be to research your competitors, your successful competitors, and seeing what they're doing, seeing, you know, are they using locations in their hashtags? Are they using their name in their bio? How long are their captions? Little things like that, and experimenting with that, trying that in your content, and That is my long-winded answer to say my one piece of advice would be to research. Research, right? And Mm -hmm. to have that information in front of you to inform your marketing decisions intentionally, Mm -hmm. which is part of the strategic piece that we do before we do any work for clients, right, is is that research. And Abby, what would you say? Because there's a lot of bristling that happens when uh, we mention, or not us, but any mention of competition or competitors Mm -hmm. in the industry. And when we're, you have to... Realize that when we're talking about digital marketing, competition mm-hmm. isn't like we're going to put you in a ring and fight it out to the death. You know, we we definitely believe in a rising tide lifts all boats and the, mm-hmm. the community and helping each other as interior designers. I was part of that when I was doing interior design. But help us to understand how um, important it is for competitor research in the digital space in order to show up in mm-hmm. front of your ideal clients. Yeah. So there's a couple different ways you could go about answering this. We get some clients who come in and they think they know who their competitors are. Um, Mm -hmm. Maybe that's because someone has more followers than them or their design styles are similar. But really figuring out who your competitors are and the importance in that lies in kind of the type of people who are interacting with their content, who is following them. Um, Are they located close to you? And maybe is their ideal client the same? So Mm -hmm. again, it comes down to thinking about your ideal client's demographic and kind of going in that direction. I would say. Yeah. It, and it's important for on a, in a digital realm, mm. because when you're marketing for your business, we're thinking of competition in the terms of how are you going to, how is your voice going to be heard exactly. amongst 
mm-hmm. right? Other interior designers who have your same uh, audience. So it's not, mm-hmm. it's not saying, you know, down with the competition. It's just how can I be seen by my ideal client? Just so we make sure that there's no negative connotations or bias. Exactly. To that. It's, it's important to do that research for every, every business. You don't, you, you're not going to see any big company who started without a business plan or a marketing plan mm-hmm. or <laughs> doing mm-hmm. that research. And if they are, they're, they're winging it and they're not a big business. I guarantee you mm-hmm. there's not one. Yep. Abigail Weidman, I think this has been really insightful. I love learning that you have to sneeze three times. <laughs> that makes me feel closer to you. Oh, that's so sweet, Darla. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is there anything else that uh, you want to say before we bid you adieu? I don't think so. I think we've covered it all. You know, I sneeze three times. So that's, that's all there is to know about me. <laughs> sneeze three times oh in the God. morning. Da, da, da. These bloopers. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Abigail, thank you so much. I, I, you're doing a tremendous job here and we are also grateful that you are the boss. So oh. thank you. Thank you, Darla. Thanks everyone. You know, as a business owner, I have to tell you that one of my whys and one of the things that gives me the most joy and pleasure and meaning in my life is working with my team and with people like Abigail Weidman. Coots. Change your name, Abby. Uh, It's just so fulfilling and gratifying and watching my team grow professionally and watching them interact with clients. And I feel like a proud mama bird. I really do. It's it's great. I don't have any kids of my own. So just watching them is like, ah. Oh, that's so cool. They're my team. I can't believe it. So thank you so much, Abby, for all you do. I'm so happy that you are the assistant director at Wingnut Social. Things are just going so well and you're killing it. So if you're interested in marketing for your interior design business, or if you're a to the trade manufacturer or a, a home furnishings vendor kind of situation, you'll be dealing with Abby, <laughs> Abigail, or any of my team members whom you're going to meet in the next couple of episodes. And they're going to have some terrific marketing advice for you for your interior design business to get seen and found by your ideal customers, clients, and super fans. All right, guys, that is it for this mini news sesh. We'll see you on Wednesday for our in-depth interview with a fantastic guest. So remember, until next time, to get out there, get uncomfortable, and be great. Many new sash. Yeah. yeah.